Welcome. There it goes. Welcome to Teachers Teaching Teachers. It is the 26th of July, and we have some really exciting guests here tonight. <laughs> I really want. I actually, I, the, the, it's wonderful to see all of you. Welcome. Um, let's do brief introductions. Charlene, do you want to start us off? Sure. Um, I live out in Oregon, Western Oregon, and I'm um, a project-based learning teacher and coach. And I've uh, participated in CL MOOC in the past and in some of the writing project, um, various uh, initiatives that have taken place. And you were here a month or so ago. Like tried, a month ago, yes. You, made, you tried to make a, a thinking partner, thinking with, partner. With, um, with who? I forget. Uh, Neil Gaines. Oh, yeah. And we never, I never followed up on that. We should talk about it. <laughs> anyway, where do, you, where do you actually teach? I do all my teaching currently online. So I teach both social studies and um, literature, literature okay. and uh, storytelling. Okay, great. Bob. Hi, hi folks. I'm Bob Montgomery. I work, a former uh, high school teacher, but work with an organization called West Ed in the Bay Area doing professional development for teachers almost entirely online and really We've used now comment in professional learning context and uh, love it and curious about the AI potential. Cool. Um, and just to say, I, I noticed some people moving around and stuff. Remember the plus and minus key zooms you in and out. If you can't see everybody, that might help you. Um, David? Sure. Uh, I live in the Bay Area as well. I work with a small nonprofit called NextMap that has been doing uh, paper circuitry and uh, kind of multimodal literacies for a while. When the AI boom happened, um, I got very interested. My original career was about 14 years as an English teacher of, all, of fourth grade, ninth grade, 12th grade college. Um, then I went into tech and did a lot of education technology work. And through that period, I connected with the writing project. So it's been a real uh, gift to be able to hang out with people in the writing project sphere and. Um, do this kind of, and hear what people have to say and hear about this kind of work. So that's why I'm here. And Bonnie, you've taken a break from your vacation. Thank you. Yes. Well, because it's really not a vacation because oh, I'm okay. teaching summer school right now. Okay. Uh, oh. I will go on sabbatical and I'm teaching summer school at um, the juvenile detention center, which the, boy, the boys and girls are all in prison. Um, I usually teach English language arts, but I have a couple certifications and the school district uh, decided to use another one of the certifications. Bonnie, there are so many things you could introduce. I, I'd and love to, I'd love, I, I, I'm not interrupting you. Am I interrupting you? No, yes, sorry. you are. Okay. So <laughs> I will continue and say I've, uh, I don't even know if I've ever said I'm a Phil Whipper, which is the Philadelphia Writing Project. And right now um, we are in the midst of working with digital discourse, um, lit literature, and the digital world. Um, and I met Paul at our, um, uh, we had a, a retreat uh, in March. And I've really kind of been stuck to the hip to Paul ever since. Um, I'm a teacher that is is not um, uh, fearful of taking chances, taking really huge leaps, and also taking the children with me. Um, so we've been leaping into um, the uses of AI and literature. Um, and and just have having had a great time at it, and now back to pencil and paper in the prison. You know, it's like yikesy, yikesy. Um, but I'll be back at it in the fall, though, Paul. I don't know, you know, if you remember, I am going to take a sabbatical. Yeah, because... I, I wanted you to describe what you're going to study. That's what I was interrupting yes, you to do. Yes, I'm, I'm writing my dissertation. I'm waiting for approvals for data collection. Um, uh, my topic of study is, uh, it's a global education degree, and my topic of study is uh, teachers' perceptions of encouragement and support given to Black girls in STEM studies um, and advanced STEM studies. Um, so I'm looking at schools in Philadelphia and also schools in Ghana, Africa. So. Um, 
you know, that that's what, and, and all of this is directly aligned with what I'm doing. So um, it, as far as my research work. Cool. So I enjoy coming in on Wednesdays. Great to have you. Chris, you just got back from Ireland. Um, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hi, I'm Chris Sloan and I uh, just was teaching in Ireland. Um, I was teaching teachers who are getting their master's degree in educational technology. And so they were playing around with um, now comment and um, using some thinking partners in a project called wicked problems, you know, like wicked problems in education. So um, yeah, so that's what I was up to until a couple of days ago. Um, and uh, and then in the school year, I teach in at Salt Lake City, at Judge Memorial in Salt Lake City, Utah. I teach English, and photography and media production. And then my students dip their toes in some of the AI um, features uh, last winter and spring. So that kind of I think that kind of gets me up to date. Cool, cool. Terry. Um, I uh, have retired from teaching, but you know that never happens. Um, it, and gl and glad um, I uh, am working with with Charlene on her site, Epic Learners, and been working regularly uh, trying to make things work at the Learning Project Studio, and uh, uh, and just. Uh, and farming. So I still have the sweat on me today from the, from the sheep shearing. So uh, sheep shearing. Yeah. Just yeah, we, sweat. You don't, you're not all bloody. When, well, when sheep shearers came to my father's church, they were all like, <laughs> they had scratches all over them. They fight each other. That's why yeah. <laughs> they didn't have anything to do with the sheep. <laughs> no, I mean, that's cold, hard steel flashing around. So, mm. ah, I got it, got it, got it. So it's, it's possible. Cool. Thank you for joining us. Um, Charlene, would you say a little bit more about what Epic Learners is? Mm -hmm. Oh, you're muted. You're muted. Charlene, Charlene, you're muted. Good. Yes, oh, yeah. thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so Epic Learners is a community um, for teachers, for educators, whether public, private, community centers, it doesn't matter, um, who are um, excited about using inquiry-based methodologies, student-centered methodologies, um, in order to create really effective and positive and exciting learning environments. Cool, cool. Great. Um, and it, it's, I wanted to tell Charlene, I also yeah. teach at a project-based learning school. So mm -hmm. it, it was very interesting to hear that from some, another teacher in this space. Okay, great, Bonnie. Come over to Epic Learners and uh, join us. It's uh, no cost to come and hang out cool. and add to our, our, uh, our knowledge base, right? All the collective experiences that we have. Okay. So I'm Paul Allison, and I'll say one of the projects that I've been working on this um, this July has been with about 24, um, for, I guess somebody called it a pre-service um, mm -hmm. students who will be student teaching in the fall and, and the spring um, uh, from Lehman College. And we've been... Um, zero uh, lasering in to have there's so many things they could do right so um and and they're doing so many other things too they all have children and they have they're taking five courses and they're like these are young people who are like overwhelmed so we're, we're focusing in on a notebook um on now comment and uh introducing ai that way with them and most recently they're creating um uh, Chris Sloan style um, uh, out of a study group, um, the uh, sustainable development goals, they're creating project-based um, resources there. Um, so that's what they're doing right now. Anyway, um, 
what what I do have queued up to think about together is some of their notebooks. Um, that's one thing we could do. Um, we could also start with um, Kevin Hodgins' notebook, which he made public, and we can kind of look at what he's doing there. But I'm also I when whenever I saw you all come and I, I thought, oh, I should have made a plan. I'm also <laughs> I'm also really happy just to hear what you're thinking about, and you know this this is that kind of forum here if we'd like to. Uh, somebody want to speak up and say what what's on your mind and what you want to get out of this session and. <laughs> I'll wait for a second. <laughs> uh, I, I'll say that I came in because I said I don't want to get too far away from the conversation mm -hmm. um, because AI is just blowing up in all kinds of ways now and people are really getting to know about it. Um, and on the flip side, listening to uh, before the primary and listening to a, a mayoral forum in, for the city of Philadelphia, none of those candidates knew anything about chat GPT or AI. Well, they'll and, be making policy about it soon. <laughs> so. well, and, and, but will Philadelphia yeah. do yeah. it? And they're a major metropolitan who is going to have a leader who has no idea um, mm -hmm. what it's all about. So I need to be on top of it for the children that I serve. So they can, you know, put their foot right into the political mix without even having to have a college degree because they're going to be in front of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was, I was telling Terry a little, we were chatting right before this meeting, actually. Um, to me, ChatGPT and all of its relatives are a continuum, a part of a continuum of technology tools that we we use every day, right? We use Google search or all kinds of different things, but we get freaked out about this um, this new tool. And for me, it's um, it's a matter of understanding it for myself, so then I can engage with my students in um, using it in ways that support learning. It's a tool. That to me, that's what it is as a tool. I've got a I've got a, a visual aid here okay. that uh, that I'd like to use in thinking about this. I um for the last thirty years I've been plagued by a simple tool called a bucket. Plastic buckets, they always fail, and they always fail in the same spot on the handle where the little plastic bail is that's supposed to protect your hand, and it never and it always breaks. And so then you're stuck with the metal bail, which hurts when you've got 40 pounds of water in it. So somebody came up with this thing right here. And it solves the problem. Because all you do is put this around the bail, and it's all done. And for me, the lesson for this is this is more useful so far than anything that I've gotten from ChatGPT. And I am a welcome user of technology, as you well know, Paul. And this has solved a problem. It seems like ChatGPT is a tool that is waiting for a problem to solve. And uh, I'm using it. I mean, I use Chat. ChatGPT is now my default browser. You know, that's what I use for browsing. Um, but uh, I'm still... I'm... I have problems. I have issues. And uh, uh, maybe you all can help me pass them. Jump in, Bob. Go ahead. I'm just, Terry, I'm just wondering if there isn't a, a, a contradiction in what you just shared. Um, Probably. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, Terry, sorry, to, but I'll get. I'll, uh, Noam Chomsky and you are, are, are competing on beards. But these are, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I had to say that. Bob, go ahead. <laughs> I, I mean, Terry, I was, I'm just curious if you're using it, if it's your default go-to tool, how do you yeah. counter that with it's of no value to you? Well, it, it just doesn't solve a problem that I had. Right. So as far as, you know, uh, devising the right prompt, maybe I'm doing it wrong. You know, it's entirely possible. But yeah. you know, it, it is a contradiction. 
uh, I want. I guess it's because, like Charlene says, we've got this. We default to accepting technology, and I live in an area. Uh, I'm surrounded by Amish, and uh, the Amish have very clear understanding of uh, the effect of technology on culture. And they make very clear choices and they draw red lines of what they will and will not accept. We don't, I don't think as a culture, we do that. And, uh, and it's a scary, it's a little scary, especially with something as powerful, potentially as powerful as chat GPT. Although I've heard that chat GPT is getting dumber. Uh, although I've heard also heard that it's getting dumber because they're using cheaper large language models, the cheaping out on the large language model. So, uh, you know, you can, you're, you're, it's possible, Bob. I just, you know, I just, was, I just throw that out as a possibility that there are, there are other things that besides chat GPT that could help you become a, well, the, the good teacher that I uh, know Paul wants his, his, his students to be. And that chat GPT might not be the, the be all and end all that seems to be promising. I, so one, one of the sort of backup meta questions I want to have at this point is how do you come into a workshop with teachers who are all going to have different experiences with, you know, the actual chat GPT? If, and and I, I want to push back and say, are you using that term at, like, where we use the term jello or is it the actual thing mm -hmm. and you know it, it it might be time to move on from that you know that that version of ai and think about other versions but also chris i when i watched your teachers working there was a lot of conversation it seemed about i'm imagining given what they put up about is this helpful or not mm -hmm. so like it's not a popularity question or anything, I don't think, but how do we get people to, to invest in looking at it, playing with it, engaging with it, but also holding on to our doubts and questions? I, maybe that's an obvious answer, but any thoughts on that? Well, I guess um, my crew, um, you know, with Terry, you know, I'm, I'm with you on that. Like um, we have to approach it with human centered values and, and that, um, and, you know, I use the, the Moloch and Moloch thoughts of like, mm -hmm. is this stuff helpful or harmless and honest? Mm -hmm. Um, and, you know, I think that, that was a good conversation we had with, with any output and it was just, I mean, scratching the surface, but my thinking is in a couple of weeks, I'm going to have some seniors who are going to be, you know, fully engaged in chat GPT, um, and, and so I'm kind of in the summer mode still where I'm thinking about what, what are my goals in general in a writing classroom and, and how is any of this going to support those goals? Yeah. So that's, that's one place I've been thinking. The other is experimenting with it myself. So I, you know, mm. just, as a, you know, down a rabbit hole example, um, this wicked problem project that I talked about with my own students, I did one myself. So my, problem was you know with climate how is that impacting education and and so that like buildings and things like that like how are we making learning spaces viable and you know effective in in areas that are under smoke right now or or you know that kind of thing so i uh had a scenario i set up a scenario where and i've got a i've got a notebook paul um <laughs> I set up a scenario where I had a teacher who, who was advocating for, in the school district, advocating for um, pumping money into facilities to uh, mitigate climate change in a conversation with someone who was politically and fiscally conservative uh, member of a school board. Um, and so that's kind of where I uh, was playing with it for a little bit. Um, and, and so I'm trying to experiment with it and see how things go. Um, and I guess my takeaway from all that, and, and I do have something I could share that's anyway, uh, but do you want, sure. You want, you, want me to put a little, huh? you want me to put something in the chat or you could just share a screen up to you. 
share a screen. Okay. Are we, were you going to describe I mean, it? I don't know if you want to go down a rabbit hole right now because we were in a very... Okay, yeah. Keep So just keep going. We'll, we'll come back to it. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I mean, that's where I was with like, let's in this room together, educators, if you're getting a master's degree in educational technology this summer, if you aren't engaging with AI and not just talking about it, um, then I would say I would have failed them. So, you know, we played with it and I played with it more than they did um, to varying degrees of success or you know, like lots of questions. Um, but it was interesting. I'll say that because it was the same kind of um, ethos, I guess, that Paul worked with. They were already, it was a full curriculum condensed down in a small amount of time in a place that was across an ocean <laughs> for a lot of people. Um, and so this was one more layer. Uh, but still, I thought it was kind of interesting what we wound up with. I'll leave it at that for the moment. I don't know. Cool. So what I mean with what we what I wound up with was, I guess, in the end, after this imagined conversation that I engaged with, so I was the teacher and there was this conservative school board member. Um, I guess what I was left with was, as I provided more specific evidence that I could document to the uh, bot that was the school board member, um, there was kind of a change. And so, you know, is that something I could have just thought through myself as a thought experiment? Probably. Um, but the fact that it was relentless, um, the school board member was always saying, like, I'm not sure yet, because I, you know, part of the description was this conservative school board member was is not convinced that climate change is caused by humans. Uh, and they're also fiscally um, fiscally conservative. So in the end, though, I think as much as you can, I think this sounds strange. I think I proved my point to the, I think I converted the thinking of the bot. I'll put it that way. But I think in the process- In, in your I, own writing. Yeah, and I uh -huh. think in the process, if that were me working through that scenario, I think I would be better prepared for a conversation with that per person. And that mm -hmm. was my goal was to have like a constructive dialogue with someone who thought very differently about me and I tried to set up a scenario where I was fair to that person. Like I didn't say this person is crazy or, you know, this is a nut. You know, I tried to actually represent what I thought. Like I read on articles about how does, you know, like from conservatives about their school board approaches, you know. So anyway, I think in the end, I don't know if I came to any, you know, like, epiphanies other than I think the process would have helped me for sure if I were going to enter that scenario. What about the process of creating the, the thinking partner? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, definitely, again, I use like, really did my homework to be empathetic with this character that I wanted to engage with. So that's nothing new. We know like we should have empathy when we deal, you know, with, with our writing uh, in our audience, but but I think it forced me actually to read things I wouldn't have read, for one thing, um, and to try to understand a perspective in more detail that I wouldn't necessarily this this teacher that I set up wouldn't dis, wouldn't uh, always empathize with that person. Mm -hmm. So I think um, yeah, I mean my takeaway was like I. In fairness, the bot prompted me for more evidence, but also I needed to try to understand the perspective of both of those characters to describe them as personas or whatever the word is. That's that's a good word. They uh, do find what you want to share and um, put it in the chat for the whole floor. Okay, so and then we'll come back to it. Is yeah. that okay? And so you can work on it. And then, Charlene, you were leaning forward. Did you want to say something? Or should... I have a question for Chris, if I may, um, which is when you created this scenario and these personas, did you use AI to try to figure out some of the point of view of the conservative, like the fiscally uh, conservative character as to things that you want to accomplish that would also align with their goals? Uh... 
can you ask that question one more time? Uh, yeah. So, when you so, when, uh, maybe I can go ahead. Yeah. No, go ahead, Paul. No, I think when I think she's asking when you wrote the prompt, did you use AI to help you write the prompt? Is that a fair way to ask it? Or no? I missed Well, yeah. there's yeah. part of that, but no, it was more about so you have these two characters that are having a conversation, mm -hmm. um, and and they have pretty polar point of view, at least on the surface. Uh -huh. But were you able to use that, the help of AI in carrying that conversation to a point where you found some things that the two oh. characters would have in common? Uh, yeah, like one time, well, I don't know if this is, I, I prompted the, I feel like there's a couple of questions that I could have answered. <laughs> but um, I think there was one time where I said to the school board, or I said to the prompt, like, what if this school board member had a child with asthma? Uh, and the I, the thinking was, like, <coughs> they were in a forest play, or, you know, like they were in a wildfire kind of scenario. Um, and, and the, you know, the, the chatbot did incorporate that into their thinking. I don't know if that answered that question, but I, I guess the other question that I heard was, did I use AI to help me create the personas? And I don't think I did. Actually, I read some background stuff on that. Yeah, I misunderstood the question. That may not have been the question, but yeah. Cool. I don't know how to add to the chat. I'm just So gonna... let me just, oh, um, it's over there um, on the left side. Um, people. On, uh, peop yeah. See people? Yeah. And then, then, there's, then you go to the top where it says shared chats. You click on that, and then oh. you can add the chat there. That way it sticks for a while. Okay, so there's two things, all floors and rooms. Yeah, go to the, go to the all floors. Okay. The, the one that has the title. Hi, oh, Chad. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, hi, so, sorry. No, I had a, welcome. I, when you come in here, you have to introduce yourself and say yeah, what's on your mind, <laughs> if you want to. Uh, well, if, you, if I want to, yeah. So I'm yeah, just yeah. working on this NWP... Um, uh -huh. Grant ask, and so I realize I'm not smart enough to <laughs> figure out what exactly I'm asking for. So, I, Chad, introduce yourself first. Yeah, I'm sorry, Chad Vignola. I'm the executive director of the Literacy Design Collaborative. Uh, Tanya Baker from the uh, national office has been on our board since our inception, and uh, Elise and I have been talking about um, ChatGPT and other LLMs and how we can help teachers be successful. We're, we're a spinoff of the Gates Foundation's primary common core strategy going back to 2010. We're in a little ed tech nonprofit that gets federal grants to do research and figure things out. And so uh, Tanya, Tanya introduced me to Paul and I'm just trying to get smarter as I try to figure out how to funnel dollars to teachers um, trying to support kids. And so we're in the midst of a, a grant application do uh, uh, August 1st. And so, yeah, I'm just trying to get smarter. And Paul's uh, obviously, so, for me, one of the smartest people in this arena. What are some of your questions these days? Uh, OK, <laughs> I like that you put me on the spot. I love it. Um, <laughs> Welcome. So, so, we're, we are, so, so we've always been teacher facing because we've mm -hmm. um, we launched sort of a Khan Academy for Adults um, space in 2014. Um, that was uh, focused on teacher PLCs because, as you know, uh, teachers learn best together. And so we got a big I3 validation grant to work in 100 schools in New York and Los Angeles. And it was around how can we support teachers uh, in their PLCs implementing disciplinary literacy performance tasks validated by the Stanford Center for Assessment, Learning, and Equity. If you know Ray Piccione and his team, um, he's semi retired now, though he's if I get Chet. this, man, he's coming out of retirement. Chad, so I, could I, I, one of your questions, I think, is do we bring this to students right away or do we stay with teachers? Is that a fair, is that one? Uh, of your it, it wouldn't actually be my question because I'm, I'm, okay. I'm not um, going to, to students. Um, okay. This grant would be around how do we help teachers think about this as a, a support for what the, the deep work they already want to do. And so mm -hmm. it's about, um, teacher sports, because we've always been a teacher support organization. Fair enough. Uh, Chris, I had a, a question for you. Maybe you've already answered it and I just didn't understand it. 
Um, so to me, what you were saying was you, you were trying to convince your thinking partner. Okay. Did you also flip it around and ask the thinking partner to convince you of his position? Oh, no, no, I didn't. So I'd like to see that. Yeah. Right. Although I would say that it, I, I shared the link with that Google doc of my dialogue notebook. The, the character is trying to convince the teacher in, in return, like definitely will make a claim and say, here's why I think that stays true to his or her thinking. Um, and is continually prodding the other person to provide evidence. But you're right. Yeah, I didn't actually then flip it around and ask or, or try to have that person convince the other. So I, I if I could add into this conversation at some point uh, right now, <laughs> the um, when we went to the when, when we we first had the conversation with the, with 20 of those pre-service students and we asked uh, them to tell us their experiences with AI. And some of them were saying, I planned my whole trip to New Orleans with it. I did this with it. I did that. A very few of them were actually. Some of, uh, quite a few of them were saying, I'm staying away from that stuff. Um, I'm, I'm an original thinker. I don't want my thinking to be polluted with that, right? Um, and then we introduced them to, on their, their logs, um, we introduced them, their journal logs, right? We introduced them to using thinking partners and we asked them, what was this experience like? And most all of them said, even like wh whichever direction they were coming from, they said, this is different than chat GPT. And that difference, I think, is really important. And I think we want to think about that difference. Um, it, it had to do with the context it was being used in. It had to do with, you know, they weren't getting a product back. They saw that they were getting, like, some thinking back. And it was in a, a box that they were encouraged to edit. You know, all of that feels like... So when, when people have opinions about chat GPT, I almost want to say, yeah, okay, you have opinions about toothpaste too, right? But <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't mean to be, <laughs> but do, do you know what I'm trying to say there? I, I, there are so many ways this stuff can be used mm -hmm. that having opinions, uh, the better metaphor is having opinions about the paint I use to make a painting isn't really that interesting, right? Let's see what kind of, let's see what, what we can make with it. Yeah, like, all yeah. The, and I'll be quiet after this. No. Um, well, I, the students that I um, worked with this summer, they use the wicked problem solve. I forget what it is, the wicked Yeah, there problem. is a thinking partner that looks at the text and comes up with two, think, two wicked problems and suggests some solutions to those problems. Yeah, and yeah. so they, they primarily use that thinking partner. But, you know, just the little box that, where you remind people about helpful, honest, mm -hmm. and harmless, like that in and of itself was a good discussion because I shared whatever, it's not, I forget, uh, it's Claude by the, I forget the group that's got the AI system that's named Claude. Those are the people who are doing the helpful. Yeah. Right, those guys. Yeah. Actually, yeah. go ahead. So, but to have them then first read that kind of thinking behind it and then think that through as they were generating or thinking about the different um, responses from the thinking partner um, was actually really a pretty, pretty robust discussion. But having that, my point is having that in the interface itself. So when I'm making my comment and I'm reminded about helpfulness and, and honesty, mm -hmm. Like that's pretty pretty strong, and I see that working with my high school students. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like there should be a little prompt but, on their but, on their uh, uh, you know their TikToks. There should be something that comes up and says like it's <laughs> honest and helpful and harmless. You know. Yeah, mm -hmm. but Chris, I I just want to say you you also have a project now, um, right? Where so this idea of creating. What did you call them? They weren't personas. They 
creating uh, <laughs> characters or uh, oh the stakeholders sorry the, the, oh right yeah stakeholders and uh, so yeah. create stakeholders for the thing you're writing yeah first of all de developing those stakeholders in an interesting way and maybe doing it with a group would be an interesting thing uh, a learning because, experience for your students I think well yeah. my thinking was those stakeholders are particular to a like my district has an issue and my superintendent may be a lot different than yours. So like having a generic superintendent is fine because there's some things they all look for, but like being able to write the prompt for my own setting would help me if I had to interact with that person, I think like that mm -hmm. role playing that's AI a simulator from Moloch and Moloch, you know? Right. So that's a whole simulator thing that I think I would yeah. love. I mean, I think we need to develop projects like this and, and say we're developing projects like this and say, I'm going to, I'm going to do the simulation thing with these stakeholders mm -hmm. and let's see what we can learn from that. Mm -hmm. um, right. I think that would be an exciting kind of thing for all of us to be thinking about in that way. Um, some of you have been awfully quiet and I'd love to hear what you're thinking. I'm going to, if, if sure. anyone wants to jump in. Yeah. Yeah, I'll throw something out. A um, couple of things. I mean, between what you were saying, Terry, and and, and the s the scenarios you were describing, Chris, it makes me think of a couple of things. I'm i definitely appreciate what problem does Chat GPT solve, and I love the idea of the, the bail mm. and the forty pound bucket, <laughs> right? Um, and then to go from that, Terry, to Chris's description, I'm reminded of my own experience with this stuff, which is. It seems again and again that the best use of these things has to do when you throw yourself into a, the midst of a workflow or a process-based inquiry of some type. I mean, it's one thing to sort of ask for directions or a definition or to go under chat and a character AI and ask to speak to a personality. I mean, it's a very instantaneous feedback. But every time I've gotten involved in some of these processes, and I remember when I first arrived here listening to, to Bonnie, to you describing what you were seeing your kids doing, and they were generating a thousand comments. And they were just, their process work grew by a clear definite, a clear percentage. And you were sort of standing back watching it just unfold. And Chris, your description is the same thing, which again speaks to maybe the use case or the utility of the thing has a great deal to do with what your pre thinking is and how much you bring to the conversation. I'm reminded listening to this about mock trials, right? And so people who sort of rehearse and practice points of view, and you're gathering information in midstream, just really rich, detailed information, which may or may not be correct. It's clearly a part of a discovery process. It's very rough. It's very much in motion. It's very, it's, uh, it's pushing forward always, if you're bringing, you know, considered questions to the interface. If you're not, it's going to sort of just sort of be a little more reactive Google search. And oftentimes when I'm looking for something that's, it hallucinates, it doesn't really get me anywhere. I go back and ask for a flat web page from Google and I can get a definition. But if I have any sort of contextual thing I need to figure out, um, I found it to be fairly useful. But and sometimes I have to kind of climb in and really prompt the heck out of it in ways that ultimately get I get rewarded. Or sometimes I'm struck by how circular and ineffective it can be. But I end up thinking much harder about what my questions are and coming to a different understanding of what my thinking is. And that that feels like a kind of purpose. Now, how to design learning ex adventures to affect that feels useful, but it's, it's not as straightforward as what's the simple use case, or maybe it's part of the conversation. It's very interesting to hear the way these things are cycling and I appreciate the comments. That's it. Right, Chad, your hand is up. Uh, is that a go no, ahead? No, no, no. Jump no. in whenever you'd like. No, no, no. Uh, I was actually not for just trying to. No, I was trying to. You're just trying to see how it works. Yeah, sorry, I'm not used to this interface, and I'm not doing a good job of it. Sorry. So, the one one thing I wanted to say, uh, uh, please, Bonnie, uh, piggyback on what David and. Um, Chris are talking about, you know, the use of thinking partners and the quote unquote prompt engineering that is happening 
all, um, you know, it's, it's just that give and take of thought and uh, the process of thought and then what comes as a, a product of our thinking um, from just the thinking of the human to the thinking of the, um, of the AI thinking partner. You know, I think that's really fabulous and especially for younger people because, you know, your thoughts turn into actions which sometimes end in a product, whether it be good for you and, and others or bad for you and others. And I even, um, I, as you all were talking, Chris and David, I, I was thinking about that. I said, here they're getting, you know, people who, and even us, we're getting to make decisions based upon a thought that we've seen um, sort of mobilized into action by, by these partners um, based upon sometimes, like you said, David, a few words, something <laughs> simplistic or something very complicated. I could, I think just to follow that a little bit, um, one of the thinking partners that we developed when we watched what the students were doing in their journals and, and what we wanted them to bring images in. And we had some conversation about that last time, but uh, just worth saying that um, from a thinking point of view, what I did and, and, and I, I, well, I'll, I'll explain it briefly first, but so what the prompt asks um, the AI to do is to look at the text so they could take like the whole text from a week, look at the, the, the logs that the, the students have taken for the week um, and find three themes in that. Um, and then, but then take that and make an analogy of those three themes that are braided together, right? And then take that analogy and create a prompt for a text to image um, um, platform that will create an image for me. And then I can bring the image. Uh, I bring that up to, to say that what, what the, re the result that you get back is sometimes you get the whole thing, don't know why, but sometimes, but most of the time, you just get the prompt back. And part of my question, and I'm leading to a question here. Part of what I, I worry about is that that these students won't see the thinking that went through to get to that prompt. They'll just get it and say, "Oh, I can make cool images next to my thing." But when we get into showing them how these thinking partners are built, we can kind of show them you know, that chain of thought that, that that thinking partner went through, right? Which is a whole way of thinking and developing and working with AI, right? So we're not like having an opinion about AI anymore. We're kind of saying, well, what do you think about what AI did here, right? Is that? Yeah, some other cognitive, yeah. yeah. Well, but for me, mm -hmm. what's more interesting potentially is that okay so these students are making these images mm -hmm. so there's a, there's a, an interaction with the thinking partner there the ai then coming back and seeing other students images mm -hmm. so you get their thinking partner now is the other uh, are the other students right which and is the, yeah that's where we, that i i that's where i would want to be yeah and and that's what that's what the you know the dialectical <laughs> The columns on now comment permit and yeah they're in there talking about what's on both sides sometimes they pull the images over to but you know it's yeah it's yeah. a mess and a good mess good but yeah yeah um but the, well, but the reason we're calling it a dialogue notebook is that mm -hmm. is that we hope that you get ideas mm -hmm. from the ai from your your peers and then that affects what your next log is right and it's building that way. Somebody was asking the question and I kept talking. It was me. And so, and what I was going to say, you you just said it because oh. there, there is some talking that needs to happen 
uh, a dialogue that needs to happen um, in comparison. You know, when we do this with students, and, and what I even think about what we did, Paul, we did this in light speed time. We were acting mm -hmm. like AI um, because we didn't even have time from one thing to the next to the next. So where do we leave space for students and also educators to really process the process of what is, what's happening um, when we use these types of tools for, for reading, writing, and thinking. Mm -hmm. So now where, where, where all this has left me and, and coming back to David, uh, who's done so much more work around notebooks and so forth than you know, I have, but looking at um, how people are hacking notebooks is really fascinating. Um, looking at interactive notebooks and how those are used in classrooms, which are physical uh, objects, but you know, there's a lot of people who say, okay, can we do this physical thing online too? So digital notebooks, but also these, so if we can think, I, I, I'm saying a lot on purpose here, but because I, I'm excited about the different possibilities of these notebooks um, that, that a teacher can come in and say, hey, you're interested in animals because of that dead bird you saw on the way to school. Um, here's a video about, you know, how, you know, how birds are hitting the buildings in New York, whatever. But it becomes, it becomes a textbook then that is built on kids' inquiries, right? Mm -hmm. So I see a real possibility of that kind of dialogue happening in this space. Um, I'm sorry to say so much, but I wanted to kind of <laughs> spin out those possibilities. So I, uh, and, and just summarize and see if you have any thoughts about the, the, the I'm pretty convinced by now that, that the way to play with AI is in a notebook, right? So that we can, it can be our own kind of dialogue we can put text in there too. We can, you know, we can do whatever we want to. But that's, I think that would be a great thing for other people to play with. And right under Chad, if you go there, if you haven't started one, I'd love for anybody to do that. I do have a couple examples we could look at, but I'd more like to hear what you're thinking from what I just said. <laughs> uh, yeah. Me personally? So anybody. No, I'm sorry, Chad. Yeah, no, no. You guys are way ahead of. Uh, like I said, we we uh, we have been just focused on um, disciplinary literacy for the last ten years. And uh, although I will say, I, if you know Elijah Mayfield, um, who built Revision Assistant for Turn It In, I was trying to actually work with uh, Elijah. I actually had him signed on to do work with me and Scale in December 2013. Um, around how these things can support teachers, but I'm about supporting teachers. I think you guys are all about no. students, so certainly not. Uh, I mean, Bob is all about that too, right? <laughs> yeah. First. Okay. Yeah. 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 And yeah. All, all, yeah, we're all about teachers too. Yeah. No, of course you are. The National Writing yeah. Project. Yeah. Um, so we've got a bunch of National Writing Projects around the country who are entering into this um, grant application to the feds uh, to do an innovation grant around one LLM might be chat GPT. I don't know. So um, it's like the toggle between uh, the top and, and organic, right? And just trying to figure out how you make sure that you uh, solicit what matters from the field. And that's always been, I mean, we've never been more than 15 people as an organization. So we've always been tiny because the idea was to work with other organizations around the country. Um, that's why uh, Tanya and, and others have been on our board and uh, the uh, NEA and uh, AFT. Um, but we, yeah, uh, there's so much energy around students that we continue to think about how do we back our way into students by through teachers, because that's what we focus on. So the yeah. before, so one question I would have for you guys, you folks, would be, um, do you do you have a way of tracking the 
you know, the PDSAs, the research projects that you were doing? Because it sounds you've been doing such things so rapidly and so smart. Like, do you have a central repository for how you track the the inquiry that you're doing and the research you're doing, um, even a, as a formative matter? Because um, that would be pretty useful to understand what are the questions being surfaced from the field, and particularly teachers thinking about students. Um, because as a national organization, we're trying to figure out if we get a three-year or four-year research grant, um, what are the questions that should be answered? And I can tell you the ones we are focused on, but those are the ones that come from my experience. So uh, do, you, do you guys, do you folks do that? Do you, are you identifying the things that you're going, trying out and, and then, you know, feeding back? Sounds like I, Bonnet's uh, done some of these in the field. Like where is that being tracked and kept? Sort of the old action, yeah. stuff, right? So. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I mean, I, I think the short answer is is not so much, um, mm -hmm. but 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 the way, the way I, I identified like Chris's notion of right of um, yeah, think, you know, creating stakeholders and using that to yeah. look at your own writing. My little project here around dialogue um, dialogue notebooks. So I think there are various projects that, that people are doing and I think are interesting, We're, right? Um, the, um, the thinking partners, um, you know, they're, they're, they grow and, and, uh, and so there are better than 30 there. To, to just wanna, I'll just, one question that I have about all that is that with the 24, students that we are working with this summer, we were, were so involved in their own inquiry and their own thinking and their own writing and using thinking partners that we haven't had time in right. four weeks to get to developing thinking partners, right? Yeah. So, so just thinking about when that comes in is a good question. And I, I just, I wish it was sooner, I think, but that's one issue. But I think teachers should, you know, if they kept a dialogue notebook with mm -hmm. AI, that would be a great thing for them to do, right? Or are there ways for us to even, uh, anyway, this is for a longer conversation, and I don't be, mean to be an interloper because you folks no, no. have been talking about this for a long time. We're just trying to find dollars to support uh, the teacher thinking around this work. And mm -hmm. so we've... I. Elise actually, Idel wanted actually a much more broader and student facing, but I think we've agreed that it's teacher facing, well, but I, I would love the way to identify and track organic teacher thinking and figure out how can we funnel that into a, like a ongoing research pathway. Yeah, I mean, so I would love to hear from Bonnie and Bob on that question. Like, for, I'm gonna start, put you on the spot, Bonnie. Like, do you, do you think that you should have had more time as a teacher to work through stuff? Or how do you feel about throwing it to your students so fast? I mean, it's, it's kind of a set up question, but. <laughs> um, well, and, and I was really thinking while Chad was talking too about how, um, how to support co my colleagues to mm -hmm. be able to do this. Um, work without hesitation and also without fear of a superintendent or principal <laughs> and all these other top-down folks who are always telling teachers what to do. Um, uh, so how can, can educators feel safe in jumping in to what's happening as we move or this 22nd century, because it's happening now. Um, and and where, where do they find um, other like-minded um, educators who are willing to do this leapfrog of instruction with children in, in almost a no matter what way? Because no matter what happened in my classroom, no matter what the children came up with, I was accepting of that. 
Um, and, and I worked with that. And then, you know, if students had to be asked to be pulled back a little, we pulled back. But most of the time, we didn't pull back on anything. We just kept moving forward. Yeah. Um, and how do teachers, how do educators feel about even young people maybe being um, five steps ahead of them? Yeah. Uh, because these children are walking around with chronic devices. They're, they're attached to their bodies all the time. And, and we're still, uh, in many schools, we're still telling them, put that down, put it away. I don't mm. want to see it in my classroom. And that's almost becoming criminal behavior of educators. Bob, did you have a, a thought on that? Just wanted to circle back. You don't have to, but yeah. No, I, I, I have thoughts I'd love to bring the group around teachers as learners. Um, and I really want to explore the notebook idea further mm -hmm. for uh, the teachers building their learning power. Um, so I'm, I'm really intrigued by the notion of AI and ChatGPT as a tool to help teachers become more skillful, powerful learners, not teachers, learners. Because I think that's really the, what we're dealing with here, this new age. Is, it's really not about teaching, it's about building our capacity to learn. Um, and so this, it's, a whole, it's a whole topic for maybe next time. I'd love to hear thoughts and share more about the idea of learning, learning power as, a, as something AI can, can support. And David, the notion of um, the solo activity that I really think is what this is about. It's, I, I love social learning, I love being with peers, but I really think this tool is kind of like the backboard for someone who loves to hit tennis balls. And I was that, <laughs> I loved, I mean, I, I wish I could do it still, but there was years in my life I would go to the backboard and spend hours just just slamming the ball, listening to music. Yeah. And I'd rather do that than hit with another person sometimes. And because mm. it, it created this, this internal monologue with the game and with the activity that was so powerful and engaging. And I think that's what could be one of the rewards is, is, is that these are solo journeys that people are building relationships. That's another key question. Are you building a relationship with something here? Is that possible to build a relationship with, with, an, with an AI entity? I don't know the answer, but sure curious what you do. You know, it, 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 I'm, I'm struck again and again as, you know, I was a undergrad in lit, literature. I got an MFA. I got a MA in lit. I taught a bunch of years. I mean, it was always about confronting your own thinking. So, yeah. if you, you know, it, 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 you're, you're, you're partnering with yourself in right. that regard, you know? And, um, and then the, the, the assumption is that you're doing that to what end? I guess if you just like to hang out on your own, and you're okay. endlessly comforted by that. That's great, but it's it's it seems to be about knowledge transfer. A couple things. Uh, have have you guys played with that um, Shraft S C H Shraft S C H uh, R A F T dot A I Shraft dot A I? Haven't yet. That no. showed up in the in the studio. I think Kevin Hodgson posted it. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it's a young it's a, a a young guy. I think at Columbia. And it's basically it, the prompt model and the scenario is that you teach the AI something. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's the positional stance of that platform. And um, you know, it's, it's sort of a take on the write out the steps to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich or something like that, where you have to break down your thinking and then communicate it. And of course the AI is designed to sort of correct things right and left, which is a bit of a pain, but the whole notion that you're in the business of sort of explaining your understanding through this interface, I find really fascinating as a way to demonstrate mastery learning and curiosity and sort of get your own feedback because you're the authority. Mm -hmm. um, another comment, and Chad, I wanted to ask you this. I spent, I've spent a ton of time with EdTech and as a former writer, uh, writing teacher, I mean, I was always moved to see it as a way to move student voice forward, not to sell devices, or uh, we were always sort of subversive in that regard. 
And that's what I was so fond of meeting up with the writing project and meeting their tech liaison groups because people were encountering this tech and it was, and, and the trainings we always did, and I'm, I'm reminded of this with the LLMs, is that the purpose of this was teachers to, to play with them tools in ways that they are then going to take to their students. And it's a very fluid process of knowledge acquisition and knowledge transfer in that regard because everything feels loose. But um, I'm, I understand your concern about teacher facing versus student facing. And yet also there's this moment of, knowledge acquisition mastery and communication or transfer where you're you're participating actively with your students and you're modeling your own curiosity and different things and you're capturing practices um which is different than a a, a straight up critical exercise but there's something very active about this tool that's mm -hmm. undeniable um it's not just like learning uh, a piece of update on powerpoint so you can make a better presentation on the smart board um it's very very fluid and uh, iterative by nature. And, and so I think it sort of invites us to look at this whole thing in a much more open-ended way. Um, a lot yeah. of things that this conversation raises for me. And, and, and a, a, a quick point on that with Bonnie's students is, is the imagination yeah. that they brought to thinking partners, you know, yeah. was, you know, and the imagination that I think young people can bring yeah. to like our, our projects is, you know, it's, I, yeah, I'm agreeing with you, David. I don't think it should be either or. I think it should be both. And, yeah. And so with you yeah. saying that, Paul, young people versus us, you know, <laughs> I don't know if you all can see, you know, I'm all gray hair popping. You know, so who are we in this? I don't got any. As, as, yeah, you don't have any anymore. But, um, yeah, it's all long gone. you know, thinking about, um, young educators yeah yeah that's true and a seasoned educator you know yeah. where where are those perspectives as well now we and, and and in particular their experience and fear and prejudice or whatever about ai right but, and, yeah. and what they're being told by yeah, yeah, others yeah. who look like us who aren't us because we're we're the fearless, you know. We're the frontier fighters, you know. But it, it, we have a lot of people to work with who have no idea. Well, at least I do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, we should. Yeah, you were going to say something, Jolly, and well, let's I just say, say your everybody's remarks will be your last. And if you need to leave, we get it. <laughs> but okay. go ahead, go ahead, yeah. Um, well, Bonnie just brought up a point that has crossed my mind a few times tonight about, and several of you do ed tech stuff, mm -hmm. um, and how much resistance, I mean, I know teachers who don't know how Google Drive works, and they just yeah, yeah, yeah. resist all of that. Um, so what, this is a question, how do we overcome this kind of barrier? Because, and I don't think it's only old teachers that face that barrier. No. Right. Yeah. Especially since we have a complicated response also, right? Because we're doubting all the bias and, and the, you know, Terry's very eloquent description of what's the problem that it's all, you know, so a teacher who's resistant to it, hears all that dialogue and, you know, yeah, that's. I think it does go back to uh, a chat asked a really simple question a while ago. And that was like, is there a repository for this stuff? And, and I, I, I thought uh, like that's actually a really reasonable question, and <laughs> and uh, I guess my issue has been at such a fast. That's move. why we need money to. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm working yeah. on it. Well, seriously, yeah, I'm yeah. working on it. Well, I mean, my yeah. my issue has been it, it's a fast moving stream. You know, like I finished with my high school students, and then I taught the the masters. You know, like teachers, um, and and I haven't really this is not going to shock Paul. I haven't been very good about recording things as they, as they happen, you know? So I think Paul's um, to speak to Chad's thing, um, your dialogue notebook on now comment, I'm going to pop some stuff in there. I've got, you know, I shared a Google doc. I can put it in there. I think, you know, we should all be collecting our stuff. That seems like a good spot right there. Mm -hmm. Me too. And it sounds like doing regular reflection as well would be helpful in those notebooks. Yeah, yeah. Usually you need a facilitator, but yeah. Yeah, 
So um, right under Chad, there's a big thing. And if you click on that, that's, that's more, more detail than you need for setting up a dialog notebook. Um, and we can show you some examples. And there is, anyway, Kevin's, Kevin Hodgins has written about it as well. Um, so there, there are some links around all of that. Um, shall we go? Uh, yeah, let's start here next time. Uh, where's our repository? Um, how, how are we recording some of this stuff? And uh, how could notebooks be part of that? Fair enough. I mean, I, I know there were a lot more conversations here. So uh, a little bit, uh, yeah. and I'm an old guy, um, mm -hmm. and not really an ed tech guy. But oh, yeah. That's Slack. the other question. How do we get young people to show up here, too? But go Slack, ahead. Slack is a great way to uh, also track ongoing conversations. And so I'm just wondering, so there's the tracking of the concrete static stuff, and then there's the tracking of the uh, dynamic ongoing conversations, and particularly I mean, I don't know if I'm going to get this grant. I mean, we've gotten an I3 grant, an EIR grant, American history. We've gotten a bunch of grants. But this is the one I've cared about literally since December 2013. So just mm -hmm. I care about how to help teachers um, support their students' writing development. And so if we do get this one, I do want to think about what's the organic, like how do we toggle, right? And... Yeah, we'll have our research questions, and I can share that in whatever space um, makes sense because it's a little bit narrow, and Elise was a little resistant. <laughs> um, but there, there's always room for like learning more stuff, right? Like, so how do we build that organic learning and the smart people? And we've got a bunch of writing projects around the country who put in letters um, in support of this grant. So uh, we'll have a lot of teachers around the country thinking about this stuff. So I didn't mean to be such a no. interloper into this conversation. I just wanted to, because so, Paul's always, I, when I read his stuff, I, I, he makes me smarter every time I read something so he's written. I think transcripts of this, Paul, would be. Well, there, there's more than transcripts. Yeah, they're, they're, every, every one of these on Wednesday night are recorded, including this one. So that's all available. It's just like we have, yeah, it's not easy to get data, but yeah, we need to think think through some of this um but to chris's just one last thing yeah. to chris's point like you, teachers are busy and we've always tried to respect teachers time because that's actually mm -hmm. more important than money like how are there ways but maybe there is like a little i don't know uh amazon Mon money makes to, time too, yeah though. a little it's amazon card like, where they just go yeah. on and do a you know a verbal recording um of mm -hmm. reflections and you can you know you can build ethnographic or other ways of compiling that data. So that's for a longer conversation. But um, uh, yeah. Oh, that sounds great. Let me just add, uh, sorry, keep adding on. But I, 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 I've been asked to, to write, you know, about the experience and I've done a little bit of writing. It'll be in college, English and so forth. But I'm a little nervous about because because I don't, I don't think we have a, enough experience in with this stuff yet to really say what it is, you know, because I still have Terry's doubts, <laughs> if I'm yeah. sorry, right? And, and you know, and as, as enthusiastic as I am about the rest of it, but so, yeah, we can represent all that and we can show what we're doing, but I'm not ready to say this is how you should do it, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, you know, yeah. I think the stories the narratives need to grow out of Chad. They need to grow out of relationships mm. like these. Is they, you know, nascent. They're nascent here, but mm. and we've all been involved in communities where they grew and lasted, and the stories lasted as well. It, the stories don't last unless there's a relationship of some kind, and you know that's what you know. Charlene and I, our connection is through CL MOOC, and. Uh, you know, and Kevin, Kevin and I have been been sharing for 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 years because of CL MOOC and the relationships we created there, and the stories that arose from that. So I think um, just having narratives out there in a list is not going to get it. But having narratives, hey, you know, your job is huge. <laughs> You've had a huge job, Chad, and it's to it's to make it. 
uh, seem reasonable, something that, that, you know, we can all share and learn from. And uh, I, I hope you can pull it off. <laughs> mm -hmm. okay. All right. I made my last comment. Anybody else want to make their last comment? <laughs> and then we made more. Thanks for hosting, Paul. Right. Yeah, yeah. Thank you all. As always. Um, yeah, and so we'll keep this as an open dialogue um, on Wednesdays, and we'll record them. And uh, thank you all for coming. Good night. Thanks. Good night, everybody. Good evening, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night. Bye-bye.